Good evening, everybody. We are the Ebonite Saxophone Quartet, and we are very happy to be here in this beautiful Studio 150, the Bethlehem Church in Amsterdam. It's the very first Keep an Eye Foundation um, Studio 150 session, and we are very grateful to be part of this new series. Um, maybe right now you're listening from your garden or from your couch or you're on your way somewhere. We will uh, just try to have a beautiful evening together. We will start with uh, a piece by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. In 1780, Mozart went to Munich to write an opera, Idomeneo. And it was a great chance for him to write for the Munich Orchestra, one of the best orchestras at that time. For the virtuoso oboe, um, oboe player from the orchestra, Friedrich Ramm, Mozart composed the oboe quartet in F major. It has three movements and it's a real, um, almost an oboe concerto for oboe and strings. Alberto on soprano saxophone will take the oboe part, Paulina on baritone saxophone plays the cello part, Mateus on tenor saxophone, the viola part, and my name is Dineke and I play the alto saxophone and I take the violin part. Please enjoy Mozart's oboe quartet in F major.
Almost 30 years old, very happy, successful, and really pretty busy Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi. He composed a set of three string quartets, Opus 44. Uh, those quartets, they are really beautifully written works in late classical style. Uh, however, we can immediately recognize a Mendelssohnian character in them. Uh, they are full of passion, virtuosity, intimacy, romantic lyricism, there's some dance movements and elegance in it. And those quarters are probably the last ones written in a style which is still closer to one of Mozart and Haydn rather than Beethoven. Uh, we will play now for you the second string quartet in E minor, which Mendelssohn wrote in 1837 during his uh, honeymoon and it's uh, considered one of the most dramatic from this set. Uh, it consists of four movements, the first one Allegro assai appassionato, second scherzo, uh, third andante with very long beautiful lines, almost naive character, and the last virtuosic spicy presto agitato. Please enjoy our own arrangement of the string quartet opus 44 number two in E minor.
Dance Macabre is a symphonic poem written by Camille Sanson, a French composer. It was premiered in 1874. Uh, the broad waltz theme uh, in this piece uh, may be recognizable as a variation of Dies Ira, which means uh, Dies Ira is a liturgical chant for the dead. Uh, while 
Dance Macabre is one of the most uh, often performed orchestra works. In the beginning it wasn't written for orchestra. Uh, Camille Sanson, he adapted uh, this piece from his own song for voice and uh, piano, which lyrics are based on a poem by Henry Casalis. Uh, the piece starts with uh, 12 repeated notes, which uh, symbolize the midnight bells and is a sign for the skeletons and the death to raise from the grave and start the dance. Uh, towards the end of the piece, you will hear a specific signal, uh, which sounds like that. <laughs> and that's a, a rooster voice, which announces a new day, and is a sign for the skeletons and death to disappear. Uh, it is our own arrangement, and uh, I hope you will enjoy it. And this piece is also on our last CD, Arabesque, with music by the BC. Uh, Jana Czech and Dance Macabre, Camille Song. Please enjoy it. Thank you. 
The Australian composer Percy Granger collected and arranged more than 500 British folk songs. He uh, arranged them for several uh, ensembles, string orchestra or wind orchestra or string quartet. Um, Granger wasn't only a composer, he was also a pianist and a saxophonist. Handel in the Strand was originally called Glocke Dance and um, it's inspired by Handel's music and by the home of the uh, London com comedy, The Strand. Um, after Handel in the Strand, we will play most probably Granger's most famous piece, Molly on the Shore, but first Handel in the Strand. Thank you. 